Reliance Commercial Finance presents India SME Forum 2012. Find out the secrets of success in a series of seminars exclusively for smart entrepreneurs. Join India's biggest SME initiative to boost your business and celebrate SME achievers with India SME 100 Award. Folks, I think the point that I started out making there was about delivery of the brand. And I think uh, that's the theme that I want to continue, especially in the environment that a lot of you operate in, which is the B2B environment. There's the unglamorous part of the brand. A lot of us confuse branding with advertising, right? That's, that's not brands. That's just one part of branding. Because what the brand really means is, as Vinod said earlier, uh, identity. So when you say, Deepak Pandey, you, you realize that this, this is what this guy looks like, A, B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth. Likewise, when you say Govardhan, this is what the brand looks like. When you say India SME Forum, this is what the brand looks like. This is what I'm going to get when I go to an India SME Forum event and so on and so forth. But there is one, one part of the brand which I think is very, very relevant for a lot of you. And, and I think, especially in this B2B environment, that's about the delivery of the brand promise, which Unlike in a pure product environment where, you know, if you buy a, a Nestle product, you buy a Kit Kat, you buy a Kit Kat in Agartala, you buy a Kit Kat in Kanyakumari, it's going to be the same. But when I deliver a service or I deliver a B2B, a B2B product is never purely a product. So there's a lot of service involved in it. When I deliver that in Agartala or I deliver that in Kanyakumari, I need a whole ecosystem around the brand to be able to have the same service delivery. And a lot of my presentations about that. So, uh, I've, I've talked to some of this, but, but the key issue as a part of this delivery that comes up is because of the inherent requirement of businesses like yours to scale up. Let me give you another example, not of brand, but of a pricing decision. So, as a part of the brand, if my, if my, my offering is one of the attributes of my brand is competitive pricing, and I'm, a, I'm owner of a business, I can choose to control that pricing, which means that every proposal that goes from my company to another company is signed off by me, which what it does is, is that either I'm going to be working 24 hours a day, in which case sooner than later I will stop working, or I will just not be able to scale up my business. But however, as again as a part of the brand delivery, if I decide that I will delegate pricing to certain key people in my company and give them a guidance which I will monitor and look at at a periodic basis, I'm now able to achieve the brand promise that I had, that my brand stands for, as well as ensure that I, I'm able to, I, that I don't make losses or I have financial controls over me. And that's the, that's the brand delivery that I'm talking about. And that's the challenge that I think a lot of SMEs really face in terms of scaling up, in terms of growing up, and so on and so forth. You know, if you, one of the big things that has happened today and, and, and how it is actually helping SMEs is this whole area of cloud services. And that's making a big difference in the way you can ensure consistency of delivery across the entire country or across any geography or any, any location. I'll give you two uh, specific examples of how small businesses can use technology to ensure that they scale up. And this is an example of a nursing home, right? Now, nurse, these are not large hospitals, they're nursing homes. The nursing homes, which are 20 bed, 30 bed, 40 bed nursing homes, a lot of them operate with manual systems and manual processes. So many of them would have, you know, a ledger in which accounting is done. Uh, some of them might have a standalone PC in which, uh, you know, there is, uh, some level of maybe an Excel sheet on which, you know, data is being stored and so on and so forth. It doesn't provide information to, so a nursing home, if you leave the ethical part of the business aside, if you leave the medical piece aside, is, as a business, it runs pretty much like a hotel. Okay, they have, you know, they have beds, uh, which need barriers to scaling up. This is where technology comes in, by the way. Uh, the solution that we offer to these nursing homes, uh, for example, 
is where there is an ERP. A ERP is like a, it's like a software uh, platform which allows you to manage or maintain data records of transactions that happen in your organization on a cloud, which means that the ERP is actually hosted in a location. It could be, you know, Dalhousie for all you care or wherever, right? Some, some location. And however, the organization, the, the, uh, the nursing home is connected to that server and is interacting with that server on a regular basis through what we call as an internet lease line, which is a, which is a you know, uh, using the internet basically, right? So he, the nursing home is able to utilize the benefits of a sophisticated IT system without actually investing behind the hardware or the manpower or the knowledge required for uh, to be an on-site equipment, right? As well as, because the nursing home is connected, both from on a wireless medium and, and, a, and a wire line medium, I can, as the owner of the nursing home and as, as appropriate administrative staff, get MIS on a regular basis. So I will know at any point in time that I have f 10 people waiting in the OPD area, I have five people moving out of the, out of the beds tomorrow, and you know, there are 10 people in the, in the queue, this is how I need to allocate it. I can make business decisions. Again, I said let's keep the ethical part of, of this whole nursing home thing aside. But I can make ethical decisions. And this allows me, as a businessman, to have information on my fingertips without being physically present at any point in time and, and ensuring. So, for example, if one of the brand promises that I have is, and uh, pardon me for you know, using this word, but a faster checkout, right? That means when a person gets discharged from the, from the nursing home, how soon are the bills paid? How soon am I able to get the next person in into that nursing home, right? If I'm able to do that, if my, one of my brand promises is faster checkout, this kind of a system allows me to ensure consistency of delivery of that promise at any point in time. And, and I think that's what you guys need to think about. Because that's a critical, critical element of a B2B brand. One last example. Uh, this is an example of a dairy uh, in Gujarat. Uh, this, and, and we talked about the, you know, uh, another dairy company. Uh, if you, if you are aware of the whole Gujarat milk movement, uh, it starts out by, you know, milk being collected in small, uh, you know, in small lots in remote locations and gradually building up bulk and so on and so forth and all that. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware, but uh, mobile sims, for example, play a large role in that whole milk collection. So there are, there are collectors and aggregators who use uh, containers which contain, uh, which are connected through sims. These sims are able to provide information about where the container is, so you're able to track that container at any point in time. They're able to provide information about the quantity of milk in that container, and through a manual intervention, are able to provide information about the quality of milk in that container. So this, so as the milk is being collected from remote areas and coming into aggregation points and so on and so forth, the, the information about the milk is also coming in, you know, and, and it is getting aggregated. So before the milk reaches the processing plant, there is information available about what is the batch that is going to come in, how it is going to work, and so on and so forth. This is, a, this is an example of actually a dairy company which used, started using technology like that and started building uh, in a B2B environment. Remember, because for the dairy company, forget the, forget the sale to the end user, but their main customers, their suppliers were all those small milk, uh, uh, or, I mean the cow owners in, in, in remote locations. They started using uh, technology of this kind and other, other IT and telecom technologies to start interacting with their customers. They started using toll-free services. They started using, I mean, there were situations where they were really small farmers who, who were not able to, for some reason, were not able to make it to that delivery point on that particular day. This guy could call up a number, and somebody would come and pick up the milk for him, for example. And it was a toll-free number, so he was not paying for the call. I'm just trying to give you an example of how a, a business was able to use technology to scale that whole business up to a completely different dimension. And I think that's an area that all of you should look at uh, both from a point of view of scaling up as well as ensuring consistency of uh, delivery in, in whatever you do. So thanks a lot, folks. Wish you all the best in this event, and I'm sure we'll take questions later. Yeah?